up ladies and gentlemen, this is David Benjamin from HealthyWildAndFree.com. Today I want to talk about the positive aspects and the positive sides to GMOs or to genetically modified foods. Now before you get crazy and your panties in a bunch, just listen and hear me out for a minute. I am all for eating organic foods and I am all for uh, you know our organic eco-friendly lifestyle. But we have to see the positive in every, situ every single situation in our lives. If we don't see the positive in a situation, we aren't going to be able to learn, move, and grow through something and progress to our next elevated level of awareness and consciousness. So we have to see the positive in every situation. We have to see the positive side of genetically modified foods and GMOs, as hard as that may sound. So we have to look at the big picture of GMOs, okay? So what are GMOs? GMOs are you know, obviously genetically modified organisms, and it's a group of people, it's a group of scientists that basically think that they can out-genetically modify and evolve nature faster than the millions of years of evolution nature has already worked on evolving itself through evolution. So basically, genetically modified foods or genetically modified seeds or genetically modified experiments of any kind, really whatsoever, is a man versus nature kind of ideology. It's an egotistical, ego-based, uh, I'm better than evolution, I'm better than nature. It's, it's really just a man versus nature kind of thing. So if you see the big picture of that, that's kind of the way I see it. And many people that agree and align with GMOs think that science can beat nature and think that science can outdo what nature has already and continues to do on a daily basis without any effort whatsoever of any work. So it's kind of confusing to me to think that we can outwork uh, the sun, the water, the elements, the nature, the evolution of millions of years. I mean, what's the point of even trying? Like, don't you want to live life and be happy and enjoy time with your family and your children? Why, why are you trying to be something that's already beautiful and incredible and magnificent and works extremely well in its own ecosystem and environment? So it's confusing to me. Genetically modified foods and GMOs are very confusing to me in the, this thought process behind GMOs make no sense whatsoever. I mean, I could argue for days with anyone about this and really not see uh, the perspective of that in an understanding kind of way to the point where, I'll, where I would be like, okay, yeah, let's explore GMOs and really you know, push the threshold because we can totally beat nature with all of our uh, lack of understanding. Let's just throw all of our lack of understanding at one little seed and see what happens and what combusts out of that nuclear uh, demented uh, action and uh, set point of uh, very limited confusion and unsophisticated un misunderstanding of evolution, evolution as nature and the world has gotten this far in the first place. But hey, <laughs> who am I? You know, I'm no PhD. I'm not Neil deGrasse Tyson or Hillary Clinton. They know it all. They they don't have any gut micro misorientation going on whatsoever. They, they have six packs. I'm sure we've all seen Hillary Clinton and Neil deGrasse Tyson shirtless, and they're in great shape and in perfect ideal health. I'm just kidding, by the way. They both support GMOs. So let's talk about the positive side of GMOs, because I can easily get into the negative and you know rant and rave all day about the ridiculousness of the idea or notion that we can actually beat nature. Um, not going to happen. And if it did happen, we all die. So let's try to work with nature in coherence and do something productive and positive and like a seed grows towards the sun, let's do that as opposed to, you know, grow pesticides in its own self. It's like a toxic relationship and it doesn't work. So, on to the positive side of things because once again, I'm getting caught up in the negative. Let's not do that, America and everyone else in the world who wants to be positive and, and uh, you know, progress towards the positive. So, one of the things that I'm learning in my life, and I think we can all learn in our lives, is that we need to focus on the outcome, not the obstacle. And the obstacle to many, the, the, mass, the mass health and well-being, the health and well-being of the masses, is GMOs. That's a huge obstacle because people that are eating genetically modified foods are gaining weight, they are, uh, you know, it's a toxicity, it causes pH imbalance. Um, some people, you know, obviously eating a food that produces its own pesticide is not healthy. And, you know, that pesticide-producing action in your gut is not healthy because you need good, healthy 
bacteria in your gut to uh, do what it does to digest your food and remove it, whereas GMOs only just cause a lot of clogging and, and disharmony within the body and within the gut and digestive system as a whole. But in order to see the outcome, we need to see past the obstacles and we need to really transcend that and see what the outcome we want is. So let's focus on the positives for a minute, okay? So what are the two different factors within this equation of GMOs? We have human nature and we have mother nature, right? So human nature is, uh, you know, survive, preferably thrive, you know, don't just get by surviving, but, you know, thrive, have more than enough, have abundance. That's what we want, that's what we strive for, uh, many people at least. I mean, if I'm surviving and I have a roof over my head and I have food, I'm happy, I'm okay, I'm at peace. I don't need to work my ass off to get much more than everyone else because at the end of the day that doesn't make you happy and then you just have more things to manage and deal with that uh, make your life uh, miserable, stressful, and cluttered and, and stuffy. You know, it seems interesting that the more stuff people get, sometimes they get more stuffy and they get more stuff. Maybe we don't need as much stuff. Maybe we can be less stuffy if we get rid of stuff. I don't know, it's just a thought. But, so we have mother nature and we have human nature, right? So human nature is to survive, thrive, and to just really live. That's as simple as that. But human nature can become corrupted and human nature, I wouldn't call greed, ego, um, being better than or beating or dominating nature, human nature, that's that's defaulted human nature, if you will. That's that's not, that's, a, that's, a, that's our ego, that's human ego, that's not human nature. Human nature is awareness, lovingness, kindness, compassion, uh, it's, it's really, it's thriving happiness, health, and well-being. Mother nature, on the other hand, on the same hand, is the same way. But we are not aligning with nature and mother nature when we act in ways out of our ego, out of greed, out of, um, you know, creating genetically modified seeds that you need to purchase every year to keep your cycle, to keep your crops growing and all these different things. So we have mother nature working for us because mother nature sustains life and sustains our well-being as human nature. So we come from mother nature. Mother nature is our source. If the sun goes away tomorrow, we're dead. If plants and food stops growing tomorrow, we're dead. If the soil dies, we die. If the water dies, we die. Water, soil, sun. If all any of that is affected negatively, it affects us negatively. So we come from Mother Nature. So creating something out of human ego and out of human greed to dominate Mother Nature, to toxify and pollute Mother Nature. I'm spitting. I don't know if you can see that because I'm passionate. I'm passionately spitting. To pollute Mother Nature would be only to pollute ourselves. To create crops and seeds that produce pesticides on their own and eat those crops or feed animals and livestock that we eat uh, only creates toxicity within ourselves and our well-being and our health health as well. So we have to understand Mother Nature is what gives us life. And to tamper with Mother Nature and what gives us life could be tampering with our life and well-being. Now, I'm not opposed to science. I'm not opposed to technology. I'm not opposed to innovation. I'm not opposed to research. But why can't we use that same funding, that same money, and those same dollars to understand plants, biology, microbes, bacteria, fungus, and all these different things that are already in our ecosystem and environment on a deeper level so that we can know how they benefit us, so that we can help create a more thriving environment for that bacteria, fungus, and all these different things in our environment that are beneficial for us in order for us to thrive at a higher level and have more abundance of that health, nutrition, antioxidants, polyphenols, and plant compounds in our diet on a daily basis. You see, it makes a lot more sense that way than trying to like recreate what's already perfect and beautiful. Why don't we take what we have, utilize and maximize that to the fullest potential that it possibly has, which we aren't even close to doing, because we don't even know whether vegan or paleo is better for diet yet. We still don't really know. And obviously there's no correct answer to that. It's different for everyone. But you see what I'm saying. It, it makes no sense to dominate Mother Nature. So Mother Nature, we have this on our side. Mother Nature has created super weeds. And super weeds are basically a weed that's a super weed and it literally is fighting genetically modified crops. And if you're not familiar with this, Google it or look it up. Uh, all healthworks.com and different websites write about it. But basically super weeds are literally fighting genetically modified crops. Now, I look at that and I'm like, okay, you know, I believe plants have consciousness. I believe water has consciousness. 
you know, The Secret Life of Plants is a great book that talks about this, you know, plants having a consciousness and a nervous system, if you will, a response to things. And super weeds are fighting genetically modified crops. Mother Nature is fighting what man has created. Maybe Mother Nature is more right than we are. Maybe our ego is trying to encompass and encapsulate encapsulate Mother Nature, the whole planet, but we live within this ecosystem environment. We cannot beat what is created for us. I mean, I won't say can't, but let's just be real for a minute. We have a lot more value to understand first. So, Mother Nature is working in our favor. Whether you realize it or not, Mother Nature is working in our favor. Super weeds are like, just like karate chopping GMOs. And Mother Nature is going to fight back. Mother Nature will dominate whatever man creates. I mean, look at volcanoes, floods, tornadoes, look at all these things, like Mother Nature with like a little, whatever, anything small, like that Mother Nature does, it can take out anything we do. So, I don't think GMOs are going to, they're not gonna, they are sustainable. Genetically modified foods and organisms are not sustainable. And Mother Nature is sustainable. Mother Nature is built on the premise of sustainability for millions of years of evolution. What we are creating in labs does not align and does not evolve with the plans, if you will, or the natural evolutionary pathway that Mother Nature has set in place. So understand that Mother Nature is on our side and GMOs can't beat Mother Nature. So take that as a positive. Secondly, we have human nature on our side. Human nature is loving kindness, compassion, thriving, compatibility, and coherence. That's not what GMOs are. That's not what GMOs have done. That is not the intention in which they are created. The minds that create GMOs and the, the, the consciousness that sustains the GMO philosophy on our planet today is not a, a, a consciousness of abundance and of love and of caring and of really helping feed the poor worldwide. It, it, yes, it, you know, it's, <laughs> you could say it creates abundance, quote unquote, but an abundance of uh, toxins and an abundance of, of horrible things for our planet and environment for our health is not beneficial overall. So we have human nature on our side because look at this for example, look at Facebook. The March Against Monsanto page and the Occupy Monsanto page, that is like 800,000 people approximately. And let's just include all the other Facebook pages. There's probably 800,000, probably a million Facebook fans on Facebook against, not for, opposing what Monsanto is doing in the world. And look at Monsanto's Facebook page, 50,000 fans. So literally 20, 30 times as many people are opposed to Monsanto as who are for Monsanto and what they're doing and what GMOs are stand for. So we have mother nature on our side and we have human nature on our side overall. And then thirdly, we have awareness and education on our side. The reason why March Against Monsanto and GMOs are so, they're not seen in a positive light is because the awareness and the truth is coming to the forefront of human consciousness as time goes on. As farmers in India share their story and documentaries and as farmers in America share their stories and talk about how their soil is being degraded and the, the micro, microbes are dying in their soil and their soil is becoming less fertile and they're becoming more dependent on Monsanto who is siphoning every dollar they can out of farmers and using financial institutions and corporations to loan out money to farmers to literally suck every penny dry from the last drop of water in their soil to literally suck the life out of farmers and out of soil, we're understanding this. Awareness and education is encompassing and encapsulating the lies and the bullshit propagated by Monsanto and the GMO biotech industry. So I have a proposal for everyone watching this. Whether you're for or against genetically modified foods or GMOs, think about this for a minute. What if we took all that money we put into GMOs and genetically modified organisms and we spent that money on further researching plants, fruits, vegetables, nature, ecology, biology, microbes, fungal, fungus, anything living in our planet, right? We took all that money and we understood what's living in our planet. And then we understood what was most valuable so we prioritized and we created a sort of list, a hierarchy of which plants are most important and sustainable for human life and well-being and, and uh, just living and living healthy and we planted more of those crops organically. And then we took all that money we spent on pesticides, fertilizers, 
herbicides, fungicides, and we spent that money on growing more organic food. Now think about this for a minute. That money that goes to pesticides, fertilizers, and herbicides and fungicides, where does, who thought of this idea, right? To take money to create a chemical to spray food to kill bugs who are hungry to die so that they can't eat the food and, and we can. That doesn't even make sense. Bugs are part of our ecology, our environment, and our ecosystem. We can't kill bugs and keep our food. It's not a separationist, right-wing, left-wing kind of ideology here within our environment. We need bugs. We need bees. We need our ecosystem. We need all of this to sustain our life and well-being. So why not take that money on pesticides and fertilizers and all this kind of stuff and just plant more food? Plant more trees. Plant more wildlife. Plant more wild food. The bugs could eat all they want, but we'll still have plenty of crops. I mean, yeah, obviously you get a little bug in your food here and there, you know, like you get little holes in your food, whatever. My vegetables don't need to look perfect. I'd rather have a nutritious, nutritious, very densely filled vegetable or fruit with lots of nutrition and antioxidants and things like that than a halfway diluted pesticide, herbicide, fungicide, chemicalized, nutritionally diluted, diluted really brightly colored fake fruit or vegetable. That's just me. Maybe that's you too. I don't know. But I think we can start to see things differently. GMOs do have their positive. They're helping us evolve and grow as a society, really as individuals. <laughs> GMOs are helping us grow as individuals. We can see the positive in them. We can see how they're helping us evolve, learn, become more aware and grow. And hopefully this video, this type of information will help people like yourself and your friends and your family see what's really going on and see the truth for what it really is and use that in a way to empower you to eat organic, to grow organic, to buy locally, to shop at your farmer's market, and to support the right people, the right ecosystems, the natural sustainable ecosystems with your money because that's the only way you can really vote in this life. So thank you so much for your time. This is David Benjamin from HealthyWildAndFree.com. If you enjoyed this video, found it insightful, inspiring, educational, entertaining, or humorous in any way whatsoever, Please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking the button below. Like this video, leave your comments below, and I will see you in the next video. Take care and have a great day. Bye.